Hi, my name is Ben Allen with Allen CIO. Today, I have the distinct pleasure of interviewing Andrea Brito Amador. I've known Andrea for many years. She was working with the Chamber of Commerce on their marketing efforts and now owns a company, In Touch Digital, and recently worked for one of my competitors when I had a managed service provider business, helped them um, during the journey from going from a $10 million company to a $100 million company. And she has a lot of in the trenches experience she's gonna share with us today and then on a future video as well, because there's just too much great digital marketing content to share in just one of our short videos. So Andrea, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Ben. I thought we could start with content marketing. It's a nice umbrella to everything that we're gonna talk about today. Share with us, uh, talk about content marketing, please. So content marketing is definitely, I think, well, many people in the industry think it's something very, very strong in um, marketing today. Uh, our digital platform or profile that we have for any business is super important, especially when it comes to our leads and prospects finding us, right? And being ranked by Google in a way that you show up for those who are looking for you. So content marketing, um, it really is the best way to improve, improve your SEO of your website. Um, the quality and quantity of visitors to your website, uh, creating relevant original content using targeted keywords and phrases, you know, drives those prospects to you. Um, it's in, in search web, SEO is search engine optimization. I believe I may have mentioned that. Um, and the goal of that is to achieve first, first page status for your keyword search. Those of you who are, are those of your prospects that are looking for you or your clients, um, they want to see you pop up on the first page. So that is the goal. Um, delivering original content as a subject matter expert and uh, you know obviously um, putting forth that content for your audience that information for your audience on your website um, earning backlinks to your website if you're familiar at all about backlinks other um, authoritative dorm domains if you get one or two or three even uh, really solid domains meaning other websites or other partners that make sense with your business um, that is huge for SEO for your for your company, and then also um, brand positioning. That's that's the value that content marketing brings to your audience or brings to your company and your website. You know, the idea being that your audience a stays on your website. That decreases bounce rate. I might be talking with a little bit of lingo here, but bounce rate is how long does a visitor on your website stay on your website? And that's huge when Google is looking at you to rank you as an authoritative uh, um, presence on the internet, right? Um, do they find the information they need? Constant contact, content, uh, whether it's evergreen content, evergreen content is content that stays on your website, is keyword rich for your industry. And that's something that never changes. And then of course there's organic and, and new content that you put on uh, your website for that. I like um, our, oh, go ahead, sorry. Yeah, so I was just gonna mention that um, for a company to go to your website and see an active blog or a homepage with updates and Twitter feeds and all of that is, is just huge. And that's another thing that just adds to your SEO value with content. I like what we're talking about SEO. I, I see that, and this is partially based on conversations we've had, that instead of Google AdWords where you're paying for uh, positioning, SEO is all about the organic aspect and the topic of what we're talking about today in our, our next video. That as we talk about some of those specific SEO events, uh, when we talk about uh, webcasts and vlogs, can you share with us what those are and how they can impact your SEO? Yeah, uh, well, what you're doing right now, doing interviews on vlogs um, or vlogs, which are video blogs, uh, when you put those on your website, that shows Google 
when it crawls your site and indexes your pages, and that's what Google does, um, not to get too deep into that, but um, it shows that you are active, you are current, and that is what is a, a, what organic is all about. Or, organic contact, organic rankings on Google. When somebody searches, you know, say for you, um, CIO, best information, best practices, virtual CIO, all of those keywords then are, are keywords that you can, uh, that you would absolutely leverage uh, with this active page, the blog page. And then webcasts, they're a little bit different. Um, webcasts versus a vlog, I would say are um, more planned, uh, more strategy involved. Uh, when we did webcasts, we would have series of webcasts, which actually engages your audience to come back and visit your page on your website. And it can involve a panel discussion or of your target to your target audience or a demo of your product. And you can uh, promote that through email marketing, you know, three weeks, four weeks before you have the actual live event. The great thing about webcasts, they can be recorded as well. So even if you don't have a great showing um, of visitors, you can still, that's content. You, you set it up and format it in your branding, and then you push it out uh, over the next year because you have that content saved. So that, that's the difference between those two. Those are excellent examples. Uh, and... Uh, as it comes to uh, my favorite vertical, my only vertical, manufacturing, I, I'd like you to do the same thing, but compare and contrast uh, white papers and case studies. I was originally confused that thinking they were kind of the same thing, but can you share some of those nuances and maybe throw a little bit of your experience with manufacturing into how that uh, can apply to them? Yeah, I, I would say white papers and case studies have changed a bit over the years. Um, white paper that basically highlights the benefits and the rationale for implementation of whatever proposed solution that you are, are speaking about or writing about in a white paper. It's usually a little bit longer than a case study, um, but these days with the short attention span, yeah, you gotta kinda still keep them short. Um, they are focused a little bit more towards the C-level. Um, case studies are too, but Case studies could be a little bit more uh, focused toward middle management, um, people who have are influencers of C-level, if your target audience is a C-level. And in manufacturing, I mean, a white paper, you could do any, ugh, there's such an array of, of, if you're speaking, like I say, to a C-level, um, in that there's such an array of subject matters or, you know, pieces of your product you could put in each specific white paper. And then of course, that can be used in email marketing that can that sits on your website with, um, with keyword strategy, um, content around it. And then also, um, you know, you're pushing that out obviously to, to the C level. So um, you're the expert when you write a white paper. A case study is basically your uh, an example of your solution, an example of how it solved a problem for one of your clients. Um, we've done case studies that can be um, basically um, anonymous if your client doesn't really want to, to have their name in another branding in some way or, or co-branded. So you could do them, you know, obviously anonymous, but it's a great, those today, case studies used to be a little bit longer, but today they're one page. They're three pieces, you know, the solution, the, I'm sorry, the, um, the problem, the uh, solution, and the result. It's super simple, but they do actually, in our, my experience, for email marketing, uh, pushing them out, as a call to action in email marketing, case studies are fantastic. I, I like your point about brevity. It brought up a story you shared with me earlier that I'd like you just to briefly explain. What's the goldfish story? Oh, um, well, um, it's a statistic actually of our diminishing attention span of 
human attention span diminishing. Uh, Digital Information World estimates that human attention span has dropped since 2000 from 12 seconds to eight seconds in 2020. And they compare it to the attention span of a goldfish, which is nine seconds. <laughs> That's so great. But uh, uh, I wonder, let's, uh, we've talked about a number of smaller points such as infographics, testimonials, memes. Uh, do you wanna spend some time talking about some of those other digital marketing collateral, if I may use that word? that uh, is important to manufacturing companies? Yeah, uh, well, let's, let's talk about one of the, one of the best drivers um, that I've experienced um, is surveys, um, actually checklists, but we're gonna actually um, address that in another interview from what you and I spoke about because we could really expand on that. But as far as surveys go, um, for manufacturing, if you were targeting, say, procurement managers or design engineers or R&D teams, you think about five questions that clearly focus on the pain their roles have to deal with on a regular basis. And you compile them, and you can even use SurveyMonkey. I mean, we always used SurveyMonkey was a great tool, and it was the, the level that we used it at early in the early days was free. Um, but having someone that's such an easy conversion someone clicks through to a link they have five questions you put in the subject line of the email you know do you have 30 seconds to answer some questions you can even leverage you know a gift card or something um, and then you get not only do you engage them they remember your brand they remember your logo they remember the survey but you also have that information um, collected that you could create an infographic from that information later on. So this is kind of top of funnel um, in, the, in the sales cycle. They don't know you very well, but here is a survey. Oh yeah, sure, I'll take 30 seconds and take this survey. And it gives you great information. It lets them know who you are it's a great way to, to start. When we had a survey for managed services, it was sent to straight to decision makers. So we were able to collect that information and say, you know, cr create our infographic decision makers um, in the managed service industry. Um, it, actually, we were doing it for technical um, IT um, decision makers. So we, as you can see, you could just build content from that survey and it's such an easy, easy thing to do. Wonderful. We're going to be providing an example of that too in the end of our video today. So uh, that's going to be some of the content we'll get to share with you that Andrea is going to provide. The, uh, the last thing I really wanted to hit on is just there are a number of simple, um, some are maybe a little more difficult, but when it comes to your actual website, making your website more effective that a lot of people, they put up a website 10 years ago, they haven't necessarily changed it. What are some of the top things that you see that people could uh, use their web designer for or do themselves to make their website more attractive to their ideal customer? Well, um, this is something I learned early on um, when I was working with the, uh, and I, the managed service provider in, uh, in the Denver area, uh, area. Well, our website, we kept trying to do all of these, uh, great promotional things, email marketing, content managing, you know, pushing out fresh content, pushing out content on social media. And when we kept getting our rankings, it wasn't changing. And one of the things we did was we realized through working, I worked with uh, SEO vendors, so I know a lot of this information, um, we had technical issues on our website that was blocking us from ever getting any ranking um in from google from search engines and here's just a couple of you know fixing technical issues like being mobile friendly today you have to be mobile friendly in order to get anywhere with google your xml sitemap that's a roadmap to your website what google uses to rate your website it needs to be where where google can crawl what they call crawling 
um, in order to even rank you. The speed of your website, sometimes your images, they're not optimized, or there's you know, pages that you don't even realize have dead links. All of this adds to your speed errors. Um, site errors, just like what I mentioned, and then SSL certification. Um, that is something, a few things that you should really address. And then as well as um, the keyword strategy, a lot of times people on their website, they're not even speaking to their audience directly. They're actually just touting all their information but not really connecting what people are searching on Google for to their website. So, you know, basically um, doing a, I use a tool called um, uh, Google Trends to find out keywords that are being searched to kind of give, give you a little bit more um, uh, kind of juice on your website, right? To, to be found, obviously. But the technical issues you got to address first and then your content this goes back to the content management piece your content needs to have common sense use of keywords um, google will will um, ping you if you are just stuffing keywords into your content and it's not making sense years ago that used to be a strategy well now google has smartened up you have to have original content, you have to have green, um, evergreen content, and you have to have keywords that make sense. You can't just stuff them in there. And then of course, use social media to kind of push out, those are the channels you use to push out um, all of that great content, that original content, that gives you kind of that digital juice, we call it, um, to keep that, keep that going and get your ranking up on Google. It's a, it's a marathon, it's not a sprint. A lot of people are like, I want to get on the first page of Google tomorrow, but that uh, does take some time. I think I counted seven different techniques that you recommended, and that is also gonna be an attachment that we put out so that you can use that to talk to your website designer. And of course, we'll have Andrea's contact information as well, because if she doesn't do it, the cool thing is she knows people that do. Uh, so, Andrea, just to uh, try and finish this off here, uh, is there anything else you'd like to share with us? Uh, yeah, one thing I did not get a chance to mention was um, Google My Business is one of the best ways uh, to be found by people who are searching for you. It is linked to a map. It's basically your Google profile online when somebody searches for your business. It pops up. Uh, to the right of your uh, listing on the on the page that shows the results on the results page. And if, if you have not updated your Google My Business, that is something you absolutely have to do. And maybe we could go into detail about that in the next, uh, in the next video. Great. How you do that. It's not the easiest, but. Uh, Andrea, a lot of good content today. Thank you so much. And just the last thing, of course, is would you, Mind telling us a little bit more about your business and your, the uh, ideal customer that you like to serve? Well, um, I'm actually in the process of rebranding and la launching my consultancy under a different name, which is In Touch Digital. It was originally In Touch Public Relations. And now that I have public relations and that digital strategy um, combined, um, it's a great fit. Um, I would say. It's, I'm a great resource for any small or mid-sized business looking to fully outsource a boutique marketing PR firm um, or partner with their existing marketing team. Um, you know, sometimes uh, the company that I worked for had a robust marketing team that supported their revenue growth from $10 million to $100 million in four years. And how do you do that? Um, there are many factors involved, but marketing is a huge piece to growth. Andrea, thank you so much for joining us today. We're going to do another video for next week because there are a couple key items, such as checklists, that uh, are the most amazingly powerful SEO tool that Andrea has seen as of late. So thank you, Andrea, and look forward to our next video. Great. Thanks so much, Ben.